The next thing that we're going to talk about today is the operation of the Gen 7 timer uh, through the interface, which is now a uh, laptop or a desktop, some, some type of Windows device. You can even use a Windows tablet as long as it runs the Windows software. It will operate our, our Gen 7 swimming. So we find the icon here, double click. Comes up, you should see it's version 1.6.2. And right now, because we're remote from the, the timer, and we're connected via the district's network, it took a second there to, to find where the timer was at and connect the, the two. Uh, the next thing that we have here is so simultaneous multi-pool racing. We can run, I think, up to three pools uh, at once from, from one timer. Uh, right here, we can select either pool one or pool two, two for this facility. Uh, we're going to be in pool one. It, it says, hey, you're in a, a current session here. Do you want to go back and continue running that session or do you want to do something different? I'm going to say select something different so you can see that process. Uh, I'm going to say new meet and we're going to do training. Video. And you can put your start date, your end date. And here it's gonna ask what course we're using, whether it's short course uh, yards, short course meters, or long course. Uh, we're gonna be doing short course yards. We can put some kind of tag in there. Uh, morning, morning session. And here we select which course we're gonna use. We have several different courses uh, with this 50 meter pool. The one we're using right now is the dive end cross course. Uh, one thing I want to note here, if you select a course that you don't have something plugged in for, whether it be a bulkhead or something like that, it's going to give you this, this red exclamation. If you hover over that exclamation, it'll tell you what isn't connected. So if we wanted to try and run a cable harness right now, we can't because it doesn't see the cable harness because it's not connected. But it went out and it found all the nodes that it needed for this dive cross course. And so we can go ahead and select it and say, okay. All right, when it first comes in, it brings you to a screen where uh, it's in the sessions tab. This is where you can download all the events from high tech that we covered just a little bit ago. If we're using some kind of uh, special lane assignments, we're not using certain lanes uh, for COVID or whatever like that, uh, we can go in and we can say, I just want to use lane one, three, five, seven, and nine. And so when we go into the software and we finish one race and we go to the next race, those lanes will always come up and be turned off. I'm gonna go ahead and, and turn them back on. It's just a, a toggle. And here for lane mapping near end, uh, we can have it normal, uh, just like in our, our previous timers where you can do normal or reversed, uh, depending on what meet you're running and, and how they wanna do it. Uh, over here, we have the number of lanes in the pool. Uh, for international competition, we can start with lane zero. Uh, here it is the course that we've selected. Uh, over here, we don't see anything right now because we haven't downloaded the meet from high tech. Uh, let me do that real quick so that you can see this come from the other end. Select our session, interface, download events. It's writing those events. And here that same message comes up. A new event sequence has been loaded from the meet management software. Okay. And you can see all of your events here. If you wanted to add, uh, you know, time trial or something like that, you could do that at this point. 
Uh, once you have everything the way you want it, uh, you can save and go back. This is the main swimming screen for the Gen 7 software. I just want to kind of point out some things here. It shows what version it is up here. We have a manual start. As long as it says ready for start right here, we can start a race. Other icons that we have going across the top are print, race data, diagnostics, settings, quick options. Uh, we have the time of day, the date, and the battery. It shows that it is plugged in and that it's at 100%. It will turn red when the battery gets low. Uh, along the side here, uh, we have this little hamburger menu. We can pop that up for quick actions. Uh, turn the far end on or off, post by place, uh, clear lanes on the scoreboard. Uh, and, and all those are here at, at the click of a button. Uh, coming back over here, the current meet is training video, shows the date that we're doing it. Event, we have the boys 400 uh, yard freestyle prelims. We can switch to any other race that we want to. Uh, we can go in and change the events or the, the parameters of that event. Uh, here we advance to the next event. Uh, down here we have the heat, we can advance to the next heat or we can advance to the next empty heat. Uh, we do count every race that we get a start for. Uh, it, it will increment by one every time you get a start. So if you're looking for, if let's say you've done some testing ahead of time and you start off and the first event and heat are race number 13, that's what you're gonna wanna look up in high tech is race number 13. Uh, here we do have records where we can put in uh, record times. Uh, that's in the, the settings page or in the sessions page. Uh, time standards, we do have uh, up to four scores that we can post uh, just here. By clicking on it, uh, we have home, guest one, guest two, and guest three. Uh, moving down here, we have the different lane numbers. Let's go back uh, to settings and I want to turn lane 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, and 2 off. Save and go back. Now on the screen you can see where I've turned all those lanes off. If we give it a start input, we'll see the, the lane is, just lane 1 is running. If you look on the scoreboard you'll see lane 1 is running. I can still go in here and turn lanes on if I want to. You can see on, on the screen here and on the scoreboard, lanes are coming on as, as I click on them. I can turn them back off. And we're gonna leave just lane one on so that I can show you a couple things without having to touch every lane. I'm gonna walk over here and I'm gonna give uh, lane one some inputs. So we're just going to plug the, the touchpad in, press the front of the touchpad. And now you look up on the scoreboard, see lane one is finished, it's first place, well I've finished, finished that lap. Uh, this is a 200 medley relay so we're going to keep going. But you see the touchpad input come in on the screen, you would have seen uh, that touchpad input come in and now you have the first lap split. First lap split was uh, the 50 yard split and it was 48 seconds and 65 one hundredths. Let's say this was a relay race and the next person got in the water and right now we have 15 seconds that the touch pad goes dead that allows that swimmer that swam their, their lengths uh, to get out of the water without incurring another touch. If they did, uh, hit that touch pad outside of that parameter, it would bring up another touch. So in order to take that touch away, right here, minus touch, minus touch lane one, and now we go back and we don't have any splits. Uh, let's say it's little kids, and little kids are 
just trying not to drown and, and aren't hitting the touch pad uh, effectively. So they come, they grab the top of the touch pad, they turn around, they go the other way, uh, and it doesn't record a touch. Uh, in this situation, we will hover over the plus touch button, hit plus touch, and it will show that we, we are on the next, uh, next set of lengths. Uh, there is no split time because the split time is wrong, but when the next touch comes in, it will be the appropriate length. Uh, I'll demonstrate that by just hitting the touch pad here again. All right, you saw that touch come in. Now we come back over here and in the software it shows it was the 100 yard split. Uh, and so it will keep on, on going from there on. Uh, the next button I want to talk about is finish arm. So let's set, let's reset this real quick. If we hit reset without it being the end of the race, with all, without all lanes having finished, it's going to ask you if it was a false start. I'm going to go ahead and say this. Yes, this was a false start. So now I'm going to go up here and I'm going to select a 50 yard. So we're just looking for one one input. We'll go ahead, give it a start. Actually, let me let me do it from the start system. All right, we're off and rolling. So this is just a 50 yard event. Uh, if we are using uh, push buttons at the, the end of the race, we're gonna have one up to three people standing there. And with the way that this pool is constructed, the touch pads are right on the edge of the water. So if somebody inadvertently trying to do a good job comes up with their push button and steps on the front of the touch pad accidentally, you're gonna see that the touch pad is finished. Swimmer may be just a couple feet from the wall. Uh, the action that needs to be taken by the operator of the timing system is what's called a finish arm. And we have two ways that we can finish arm. We can finish arm just the lane or we can finish arm all. If it's just an error that occurred in lane one, finish arm lane one, time catches back up to where it's supposed to be and when the touch comes in, the race will end. Here we have our, our placing. Uh, we, didn't, we didn't get any buttons because we're just using the touchpad, but it shows that the race is finished. All we have to do at this point is click on finished, save and reset, and then advance the event or the heat. We can advance uh, the event to the next event this way, or we can pick an event we want to go to if we're doing some kind of weird finals program. Uh, in this case, we're just gonna go to the next heat. I'm gonna plug a few backup buttons in so we can see what those look like in conjunction with the touchpad. We're just gonna demonstrate what happens at the end of a race when the buttons come in with the touchpad. So we'll give it a manual start here. We're off and running. We're just looking at lane one. So we say that the touchpads and backup buttons should come in together within three tenths of a second. If it's outside of that interval, it may be something that we wanna look at. So I'll show you both cases when they come in together and, and when they come outside of that interval. The first one is gonna to be together. No. So all I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna hit all three touchpad or all three backup buttons and the touchpad at the same time. One, two, three. So that race is finished. We've got all the inputs. And if we look on the screen here, there's nothing flagged. It's all the, the same color. If I wanna click on one of them, I can say, I just wanna use the B and C times. I wanna use A, B and C times. And after you select that, you can update and, and select to use the backup time. If, it, if you like the backup time, let's say it's a, a backstroke or a breaststroke where uh, they touched the pad, but it didn't, uh, the pad didn't activate. 
uh, and we want to use that backup time. Uh, right now it shows 3559. If we say use, it changes it on the scoreboard and on the software to 3567. I can restore that pad time by saying, no, that wasn't right. The official came over, said we, we want to use the 3559, and I can restore that. All right, so that's uh, the situation when all of the, the backup buttons and touch pads come in within that three tenths of a second. We're going to run another race, and we're going to show you. Here we get a little warning says, hey, you've already used this event in heat. So we'll go ahead and and move it to a next uh, next heat. So we're still, we're at the end of the race, it's just a 50. Uh, we're looking for uh, backup buttons and a uh, touchpad. So let, let's say this is, let's say this is a butterfly, it's a little kid, and all they wanna do at the end of the race is breathe. So we have the three buttons that come in, and they hit the touchpad, but nothing happened. And then they kick it with their leg or they hit it with their elbow and the touchpad comes in. So now you see on the screen here, it's all in red. It says, hey, we got issues over here. Uh, touchpad time is 3708. Our buttons are way earlier than that. But hey, look, all them buttons are pretty close together. So we go to our official say, hey, this is the situation. What do you want to do? And more than likely the official will say, yeah, let's use the backup time. So we'll promote the backup time. It goes to the display. If that changes the order of finish, you'll see that change on the scoreboard as well. That is the nuts and bolts of getting the right number of touches into uh, the timer for any particular race by either removing or adding touches. Uh, the next section that I wanna cover is our diagnostics. This is kind of a, a new feature uh, with our serial system. It allows us to do a, a pre-meet check uh, so that we don't actually have to be running a race and we can have a, a really nice graphical interface here to show us what's working, what's not working. If you look on the right side of the screen, you'll see a, a legend here. Green is for a momentary closure. Yellow is for corrosion. Uh, a red exclamation point is for shorted. Blue is for open, uh, and then the background input needed if it's white, gray not detected, and uh, incorrect input. So we're just going to start the test, and it says diagnostics is running. Uh, this works in conjunction with the, the scoreboard as well. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is go give us a start input from the start system. If you look on the screen here, you'll see that, that green check mark came up right here. That says we got a, a good start signal from the, the start system. And we'll go over to lane one where we've got our touch pads and our backup buttons. We'll hit the touch pad. And if you look up on the scoreboard, it'll say P for pad and N for near end. If that was the pad on the far end and we had a far end connected, it would say PF. And then as we push the buttons, that's the B button, that's the A button, that's the C button. So it's just a, a nice way to one person to be able to run a test to make sure that the entire timing system is working correctly without input from anybody else. We don't have to have somebody sitting at the timer or at the interface saying that those, those came in. We can just see it on the scoreboard. And then when we come back over, we can see it on the graphical interface of the software as well. You look right here and it shows a green check mark for the touchpad, a green check mark for the A button, the B button, and the C button. It also is going to tell us uh, that a touchpad was detected and the parameters of that. Uh, it's pretty cool stuff. Uh, so that's the pre-meet check. We do need to stop that test uh, before we can start an event. If, once we hit stop test, it'll say ready for start. Uh, we can go back. We do have an uh, option to print a race, and then we have the option to go back and look at race data. So if a coach comes up and says, hey, I want to look at the, 
the girls 50 yard freestyle event uh, heat two. We can click on this, go to heat two, and we can see what happened in heat two. If we want to, we can print that race for them. Uh, really easy to activate, uh, really easy to use. We can go back to the main screen. Uh, one other thing that I want to cover in, sesh, in settings. Uh, the general tab, we have the accent color for the software. You can use whatever accent color you want. I'm partial to blue. Uh, the beeper volume for the interface when we receive touches, uh, whether they're touches or backup buttons, anytime we receive an input, it should beep. Uh, input output course mapping, we can edit that. Uh, we can put in a default governing body. Uh, under timing, this is where we change uh, our pad delays uh, at the start, our reaction window, uh, near end pad delay, far end pad delay, uh, relay judging interval, uh, pad to backup comparison, that's at three tenths of a second we were talking about. Uh, we can time down to the thousandth of a second if we need to, uh, but most governing bodies have it as hundredths. Uh, we can tell what the primary finish is either the near end uh, pads, far end pads, uh, races with even length count, default start end is either the near end or the far end. Uh, a lot of this is reminiscent of, of the menu in our system five, system six. Uh, backstroke start reaction enabled, disabled. So as long as you got touch pads in the water, when a uh, backstroke race is started, you'll see a time come up on the scoreboard for their start reaction time that tells you how long it took that swimmer to get off of the touch pad after the start of the race. Uh, you can have that enabled for every race uh, using relays and stuff like that, or only for backstroke, uh, backstroke events. Uh, missed pad warnings, you definitely wanna have that turned on. Uh, scoreboard, we really don't need to do anything here because uh, we have a video board and all the default codes are used. Uh, printing, this is where we set up our default printer. Any printer that you can load drivers on to the software uh, for the machine, it will recognize that printer and allow you to s select that printer. Uh, we already covered session. Uh, the last thing that I wanna cover is update. Every so often, we'll come up with a software and sometimes a firmware update. When you load that software on your laptop, the first time that you plug it in and connect it to your timer, if the timer is a different version, when you first open the software, it will say, hey, you need to update the software and or firmware on your timer, and it'll take you to this page. All you have to do is click update, and it will update anything that needs to be updated. Right here, you can see, congratulations, all device firmware is up to date for this version of Gen 7 Swimming. Uh, the very last thing that I want to talk about is the defaults. So if we go to our general tab and we say we want the volume this way, we go to our timing, we say we want this stuff this way, uh, for any certain meet, we can make that the default and set current user settings as defaults, restore a different user, restore factory defaults. Uh, the one that you'll probably use the most is set current settings as user defaults. And so your start reactions, your near end pad delays, your volume, your colors, everything that you have set the way you want it uh, is going to be remain that way until you change the defaults. And that is the operation of the Gen 7 timing software. Uh, to exit the software, uh, right up here at the top, close and we have the ability to send a power off command to the timer itself. And that completes this portion of the training.